Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another video. I'm Erin Eno, and it's Fruit of the Month time once again. This month, we're going to be painting this simple lime. You do need a little bit of patience for this one, or a heat tool or a hair dryer, because you need to let it dry between layers. But other than that, it's quite simple to do. So let's just jump in and get started. So today I am using my Bao Hong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh watercolors, a jar of water, paper towel. I have two brushes today. I have my Princeton Snap in a size 12 round and a Curry's 2400 series in a size 6 round. You will also need a pencil and an eraser because we're going to draw this out before we paint. And I have my paper taped down to a board. You don't have to. Um, I just do it because I like to move it around. It's easier to pick up when it's on a board. So we're going to start with our lime, which is just basically an oval. But it's a little more rounded than lemons. Limes aren't quite as long as a lemon. Okay, so we've got our oval kind of shape. And then it's going to come out and have a little bit of a nubby end on it. Just like that. Okay, and then in front of that, we're going to do, actually that's a little a little pointy there. I want to make it a little bit rounder. I'll erase all these extra lines for you and for me because it's a little confusing having 9,000 lines on our lime. There we go. That is better. Okay, and then in front of our lime, we're going to have a lime slice. So I'm just going to do a straight line, like so. Then we're going to come down and give it that crescent shape. might be a little big. Okay, and it's going to be at a bit of an angle. So we're going to see a little bit more of the rind on this side. So I'm going to bring this down like that. You just bring the line down at an angle and then you come in to meet up with the rest of that curve, just like that. Okay. This slice might be a little big, but it's all good. And then you're going to have a thin um, line of rind showing, but we don't need to draw that in. We'll just do that when we paint it. Okay. And we're going to erase that line. And now we're going to do the little triangles of line lime segments, starting from the middle. Just mark your middle point and come out and out the other side and then down this side they usually have I, th I think like five segments on a slice on a half slice like this so there are the segments now you need to erase those quite well when you do your drawing because the inside is going to be kind of light so um, basically that's it, but I will just leave that up on the screen for you and you can take a screenshot and, and trace it or just like draw it from that. And then I'm going to lighten the lines. Okay. So there's our lime drawing. Now we can get painting. I'm going to start with my size 12 brush and I've got a mixture of sap green 
with a little bit of indigo in there. I'm going to mix up a little bit more. But we're just going to start with a, um, a light wash first, or medium wash really. I wouldn't call it all that light. So I'm going to start with the line along the slice first. And we're just going to go around the line. This might be a little too much water going on here. I might have to pick some of it up. We'll see. And then come out at that little nubby point like so and back down to meet that line. Just be careful when you go through here. If you're using a big brush, I just like this brush because it's got a nice point on it. So I'm okay to use it for some detail work if I'm careful. Okay, so that is our base coat for the lime. And while it's still wet, I'm going to go in with my paper towel and I'm going to pick some of that pigment up for some highlights. Okay. You might want to use a, a, a facial tissue instead, but if your paper towel is kind of damp, it's okay. So I'm going to do one highlight here, okay, and another little one over here. So that should be good. Then I'm going to go into that um, green mixture again. I'm going to make even a little bit more this time. and add a little more indigo to make it a little darker. And I'm just gonna tap it in. And it'll just go where this is wet, so it won't bleed into that lime slice. And make sure you don't have too much water on your brush. I may have too much water. I may get some blooms here, we'll see. We shall see. You can just try to leave a little bit of a highlight on that little nubby end as well if you want. And then I'm going to bring this all around the top. Staying away from that highlight though. And you don't have to worry about blending into the highlight at this point, okay? Because the highlight is not going to be that big. We're going to go in and put some pigment in, but we're going to be tapping it in. So that is our base layer for our lime. Okay, it looks a little odd, but we'll go in and work <laughs> towards that uh, highlight as well. We may even go in and put some more darkness in once this dries. So I'm tapping off most of the water. Actually, I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter wash over there. Tap off the excess off my paper towel. Okay, and I'm just going to start tapping in some little tones on the highlight. So we're going into that highlight now, but leave some areas where you just don't have much more pigment at all. Okay, so we're just trying to blend into the highlights at, the, at this point. And all this does is just give your lime some texture. And it's a little wet right now, so I'm going to um, dry this a little bit and then we will go back in. Okay, so that's pretty dry. We're going to switch to our number six brush now. And I'm going to get a wash of that dark green. 
I don't want too much pigment on my brush and we're going to go right into this highlight now. Okay, so we're just tapping. Like I said, leave some areas where the highlights got very little pigment on it. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and get a deeper pigment and start tapping that in. So now we're working our way from the highlight out. And you don't need to cover every little bit of your line because these little dabs of paint are what gives it the texture we're looking for. And now I'm going to get a, that really dark mixture of that green now. And we're going to start at the bottom. Actually, I'll just kind of put a little texture on that nubby part there. And then I'm going to go all along the bottom with this really dark green. And then up a bit here. And then we can start tapping out from the dark point up to the highlight. Make sure your brush isn't sopping wet, okay? Or you will push that pigment away. Okay, I find it getting a little uh, too textured down here, so I'm just going to go in like it's really deeply sh shaded down here. Again, not too much water. And we'll just let this dry and see where that leaves us. Actually, I can come up a little more with the dark. So I'm just going to rinse and dry off my brush and start softening up some of those dots. Maybe put a little bit more darkness in there. And we'll let that dry off and then we'll go on to our lime slice. Okay, so that's fairly dry. What I'm gonna do now is go in with that green. Okay, and you need a good fine brush for this. I'm gonna actually turn my board because I find it easier to go this way. And you're just gonna do, well, I need it. And we're just gonna go along the very outline of this slice, coming up to that point and I kind of fudged it a little bit here. It's not so round. That's good. We're not looking for perfection. Okay, and then we can fill in this little area that we paint that we drew for the facing front part of the rind. And then I'm just going to kind of tap this around. Again, just so it's got a little bit of texture. Kind of running out of the paint again. And my brush is a little dry. So I'm gonna go darker as I get down here. Okay, now we need to make sure that's good and dry as well. And I'm actually finding that 
the line has gotten just a little too dark up here. I'm going to just see if we can pick some of this up. Just a scrub. I would like a little more lightness up here. That's better. Okay, and then, then this rind has to be perfectly dry before we go in and start painting the um, the pulp area. Pulp area. I couldn't think of the couldn't think of the word. So I will use my heat tool for this. Okay, the heat tool is getting a lot of use today. So now I'm going to take my um, permanent lemon yellow and I'm going to get most of it off my brush. I just want this to be the lightest value possible. And I'm going to just fill in this whole area. You will, you probably won't even be able to see this on camera because this is not the pulp. This will be like the inside of the rind and it is very light. It's almost white, but I just want to give it some tone. Okay, so it's very light, but I think you can kind of see it. And again, I'm going to use my heat tool because I don't want to wait till this dries, but it also has to be perfectly dry before we can do the last part. So after drying the area for the pulp, the rest of the lime had completely dried and I just thought it was a little light near the bottom. So here I'm just tapping in some, um, some more of that dark pigment just to really make that shadow kind of pop a little more. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my lemon yellow and add a little bit of the green that we were using, just a little bit. Okay, and I don't want too much on my brush and I'm just going to paint the outline of this inside of this center wedge just so we have it as a guideline and you want to leave a little bit of the really light part showing where that rind goes okay so I'm just doing the outline right now just so you can see it. And then to fill it in, I'm just going to brush it in, but we're going to leave some areas free of paint. Okay, so you're just kind of doing lines. You're not filling it in completely. And we're going to do that for the rest. Okay, again, starting with a really light wash of it. And I'm just going to go along the rind, like so. We'll leave the slightest line between these two. And then just start painting in some lines, but not solid, because what is going to happen is we're going to leave some of that lighter area and that's going to look like highlights on the little pulp pieces. Okay, now that center wedge is probably um, 
dry enough now that I can go back in there. I'm just going to add a little bit more green to this yellow. The yellow seems to be really prominent here. Don't want it that yellow. So again, I'm going to get most of the pigment off my brush and we're just going to do a layer over these lines again. And try to leave some highlights. So now we're just kind of haphazardly putting this color down. It's pretty um, subtle. That's the word I'm looking for. It's subtle. So there is your finished lime. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And I want to thank you again so much for joining me and supporting my channel. And I will see you next time.